<clears throat> All right. All right. It's because this was the last, uh, quote unquote. <sighs> that was nice. <laughs> Hey folks, Jordan here with another software overview video. Today we're looking at Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support, Xenial Xeris, released on the 21st of April 2016. I'm trying to avoid the 420 joke, I see. This is Canonical's sixth major release of Ubuntu long-term support. And as of the making of this video, there is no confirmed end of support date as we know of. But what I can say was the last major update, which would be 1604.5, was released on the 2nd of August of this year, 2018. So, not too bad. I mean, they're keeping it pretty well up to date for now. Of course, that is the last major update, and so we don't know when the end of support date is going to come along. Now, this release, as far as I'm aware, was only allowed three years of support. So when the extended security updates end for 1404 long-term support, then 1604 long-term supports, uh, standard end of support will come along. Now, I don't know when they're gonna launch the extended security updates for 1604, if such a program exists, but only time will tell what actually ends up happening. But again, as of the making of this video, it is still completely supported by Canonical, in addition to 1804 long-term support, of course. So what's different in Ubuntu 1604 long-term support well, a lot more than the other releases that we've taken a look at so far. The biggest one being that, well, Unity 8 is now an accessible feature for those who tinker with their operating system. Now, clearly right now I'm in Unity 7, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but Unity 8 was long in development, and this was the, well, I guess the first like major release that let people choose Unity 8 as an option for their desktop. And... I don't think we're going to demonstrate it in this video, but if I can, that is awesome. But as you can see, I've got VMware Tools running, and I don't know if Unity 8 is compatible with this version of VMware Tools, if at all. So that would be interesting if it does work, but if not, not the end of the world. There's a couple other different features as well, such as Snappy Packages. Now, I believe that was just shortened to Snap in 18.04 and 18.10. I think it was renamed to Snap. Now, compared to the standard packages, which depend on libraries and other dependencies, a Snap package, and I don't know if Snappy refers to Snap as well. I would assume that it does, given a couple other differences in this release. But basically, it just means that everything that's needed to get the program up and running is available inside of the same snap package and thus it reduces the amount of libraries and dependencies that you need to download in order to run a said piece of program uh, said piece of program said piece of software there we go get your language right jordan in addition to having new snappy packages in this release there is also a difference in the software center no longer was there the ubuntu software center as they so dubbed it ever since I think it was 9.10 or 9.04 when they launched that. I cannot remember how far back it was, but it was becoming an unorganized mess. And if anybody has ever used those versions of Ubuntu between when the software center first came out, which I swear was 9.10, but I could be wrong on that, and this particular release or the last one, 15.10, you'll know how much of an unorganized mess that particular software center was at least in comparison to Kubuntu or some other uh, Linux distribu uh, distributions or derivatives. And, um, you know, it, it's just, it was, you're able to find what you needed, but it wasn't exactly clean and organized and ideal. Well, in this release, they certainly changed that. Gone with the Ubuntu Software Center and in with this new program called GNOME Software, which is essentially just rebranded to say Ubuntu Software. And this is a big, big improvement over the old Ubuntu Software Center. And this is what they use today in pretty much all Ubuntu derivatives, except for Linux Lite. As far as I know of, they don't use the GNOME Software Center program or whatever the hell it's called. I suppose you could probably add it if you really wanted to. But in this case, as you can see, it is what it is. Now, interestingly, um, they've got a couple of uh, updates here. OS updates and software. Now this is a fully supported release, so of course the software updates are going to come in as they are available, 
which is very nice to say the least. And this is fully supported by most uh, software developers. So say if you wanted to download Discord, for example, you can go into here and download the Snap package for Discord. This is a Snap package because it'll say Snap Crafters in the developer name. More than likely, there's other developers that develop Snap packages, but this is one of the many. And you can then install it as simple as clicking install. So very simple. And it's a much, much cleaner layout. The categories are at the very bottom. There's not a whole lot of clutter. I would have liked to have seen a categories menu up in like the toolbar up here and maybe have a little bit more featured sections like new games. Well, there's new games, but that's just recommended games. Like new games, new software, and promote Linux development. Now, I don't know if that's been changed in later releases. I haven't tried them for sure, and if I have, I don't remember. So maybe that is the case in modern day distributions. So for this one at least, I would have thought that they would have improved this by promoting Linux development and promoting new apps on the homepage instead of having people dig into what's already been there for years, which in this case, you know, you can see Open Arena here. That's been on Linux for years now. Same thing with PowerShell, presumably, although I'm not sure about that one because, again, um, Microsoft has been recently digging into Linux. So, I mean, I don't know how long that's been on there. But Skype, for example, that's been around for ages. Spotify's had a pretty recent Linux port. Same thing with Slack. Same thing with Telegram, as far as I'm aware. VLC's been on Linux for quite a while. So, you, this is kind of a necessity, though, so I count this one out because you pretty much use VLC for all your media needs all the time. So, this is a pretty much given that it's on the home page. And also, it, I don't know if these featured applications ever change. I've seen Spotify being one of the more prominent ones on this featured application bar. But as you can see, VLC is up on here, and I really wish they would have picked a higher resolution icon because it looks quite fuzzy. But nonetheless, I've spent too much time on the software center to kind of show you what's new. So let's move on to the next thing. Now inside of the dash, there is a difference. And that is the search no longer, by default at least, searches online. So you remember those uh, lenses or whatever the heck they were called the scopes, the search scopes, I think they were called from previous releases. I cannot remember the name off the top of my head. I'd have to look that up. Bear with me on that. But by default, it only does local searches. And I suppose you could filter to include the web if you really wanted to, but you don't have to because by default, it doesn't search there. It just searches locally. And a lot of people rejoiced about this, I'm pretty sure, but whatever, right? But otherwise, it's essentially the same dash that we've seen for years within Unity. It's the same familiar thing. There's a couple differences like these uh, logout, reboot, and shutdown things within the applications. Um, probably a couple other new apps have been included as well. I couldn't tell you for sure, but what I can say is uh, image magic display, whatever this is, that was certainly not there before. I don't know if that's got something to do with the VMware tools program that I'm using to do everything, it could very well be, but I wouldn't hold any money on it. Of course, the Amazon web app is still there. The Unity web browser is still here too. And since we're talking about that, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Now, of course, in earlier versions of these, oh, uh, uh, now in earlier versions of Ubuntu, this is what's used for web apps. It's a Chromium-based browser, which kind of looks like a little app in, itself, in and of itself, more or less designed for touchscreen use. And it's very minimalistic, but I suppose it's that way, so that way it's not too cluttered. Now, usually in these videos, I always like to go and figure out what the uh, what is my browser. And usually it says, like, Chrome 35 or something like that, but I'm gonna try a different service here. Oh, I'm using an unknown browser. Well, isn't that just interesting? <laughs> what about this one? What does it think? Chromium 57 on Ubuntu Linux 16. Well, at least they got the long-term support division correct. That's a nice thing. But uh, yeah, 
So that's basically what that uses is Chrome or the Chromium open source web engine, which is nice to see. But otherwise, that's that browser. And obviously this is the Dash, very familiar stuff to many Ubuntu users. Another interesting change that I also forgot to point out, and this is by default, of course, a couple of programs got axed. One of them you might have already noticed was the Brasero Disk Burner program. Remember, if you were burning CDs or DVDs, you used Brasero. Now, I suppose you could probably still download that, but by default, it's been removed from the ISO, probably to save on space for the ISO. So it downloads quicker and whatnot. Another program that was actually removed, probably due to obsolescence of a bunch of different um, networks, was Empathy. Empathy was the instant messaging client that was in Ubuntu for the longest time, but that was removed, and I imagine it's because of the loss of many different protocols, such as AIM and Yahoo Messenger and Facebook and Google Talk, which eventually came Hangouts anyway, and technically still works via the same protocol. Uh, Twitter probably moved on, um, so on and so forth. I mean, a lot of networks moved on and, um, and or lost themselves. And I think MySpace is probably just too unpopular now to even consider. So Empathy and Brassero were both taken out as of this release. So that's another thing. Now there's another minor change in that if you have an AMD or ATI graphics card that use the Catalyst driver or FGLRX, I'm sure a lot of people know what I'm talking about when I talk about FGLRX because it used to almost never work properly, and that's still the case today, although it's much improved. Nowadays, they use like open source like Radeon and AMD GPU open source drivers, as well as AMD's own proprietary ones that you can download and install. So the older stuff is just basically no longer supported as of this release. So if you have an older G GPU that only used FGLRX, well too bad, you're going to have limited graphics support. So other than those changes, there's really not too much different, but again, this is a long-term support release. It also has a bunch of security improvements amongst reliability improvements, and it has the same Unity 7. So I want to see if we can get Unity 8 to work. So I'm going to go ahead and log out here, and let's see if we can get Unity 8 to start. Now, I'm not sure how you change the session. That's the thing I don't know about because there's no obvious way to change your desktop um, thing from the lock screen or your session or whatever. I just don't see any kind of way to change it. And I'm not sure if you have to enable it manually inside of like the terminal, but at least from what I've been able to see, it's not able to be registered. As you can see, there's VMware tools launching there. But I'm not sure if we can actually get that to work. Yeah, I can't see anything. But, you know, just take my word for it. Unity 8 did have some kind of an option. Maybe it's been disabled because I'm using VMware tools. But my guess is that, you know, it's just there, it's just I don't know how to enable it. Anyway, before we take off, I will say that the Firefox web browser and LibreOffice are up to date as of the making of this video. So you have Firefox Quantum version 63, and we have LibreOffice 5 point something or another. I guess we'll find out here pretty quick. It is LibreOffice 5.1.6.2, and it also shows the Linux kernel version as being 4.15. So, very nice there. Of course, that is the presentation making software. So, I think that is going to wrap it up for Ubuntu 16.04 LTS. Very solid Linux distribution you can still download and use today. A very solid release, and one that I would still happily recommend for slightly older PCs or ones that need more robust um, compatibility with older hardware or something like that. I, I don't know what kind of use case scenario this would probably have, but... Regardless, it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down this VM, and I'm going to close this video down. So thank you all for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to see more videos like this one, or even some more diverse content, don't forget to subscribe, and I will catch you all in a future video. Have a good one.